When I arrived at the Salvation Army Southview Heights on March 1, 2021, I discovered that it was regarded as one of the most hard places to live. As I began interacting with the residents, I realized why it was often referred to as a kindergarten for older. I honestly believe, just like everyone else, that after being exiled from the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve sought sanctuary in the Salvation Army, which provided them with both shelter and a sense of belonging. It became clear that the Salvation Army had a significant role in Adam and Eve's life, after being exiled from the Garden of Eden. Despite the fact that I was brought here with a full intention of dying, I truly believe that the Salvation Army would provide me with the best treatment and care. However, I immediately discovered that the Salvation Army Southview Heights is an assisted living facility that does not offer care. The Salvation Army facility has two sides, one where guests do not wear masks, and my side where all guests must wear masks. Despite having using the same halls, dining area, and chapel. The Salvation Army is a one-way street. They've put all of us here to die. When you achieve your goal, they display your photo on the board. It did not take long before, I discovered that it's much simpler to live here if you lock your door and limit your activities to your room. In four consecutive instances, the Salvation Army told me not to socialize with staff members. This directive came from my workers and the building's manager. Before Christmas this year, the Salvation Army held a town hall meeting for all residents. Do not socialize with staff. Allow me to share an interesting anecdote. Every year, a Christmas box is prepared for the staff. This year, the box contained an impressive sum of over $4,800. This money comes from the tenants. While this is admirable, the tenants express their distrust in the management's ability to count the money accurately. Consequently, two tenants were required to be present during the counting process. Before I arrived at the Salvation Army, I received monthly benefits exceeding $300 for rent through my enrollment in the Shelter Aid for Elderly Renters, SAFER, program. This program was a lifeline for me, ensuring that I could afford a secure and pleasant place to live, as well as medical care as an older person on a fixed income. This program compensated for my PharmaCare. Because I live here in the Salvation Army. Pharma, care only covers 75% of my meds, I now pay 25%. The total amount of my bill is $467.87 for the period between January 1, 2023 and December 31, 2023. Unfortunately, this essential benefit has been terminated. So there isn't any money in my bank to pay this bill. This is all, because I moved into the Salvation Army, the money formerly allotted by SAFER to the renters has been transferred to cover the Salvation Army's expenditures throughout everyone's stay here. The SAFER statement suggests that the Salvation Army is collecting funds in the names of tenants who are unaware of SAFER, which stands for Shelter Aid for Elderly Renters. This program provides financial assistance to eligible elderly tenants on fixed incomes to help cover the costs of their monthly rent. However, the fact that none of the tenants are aware of SAFER raises concerns about transparency and communication. Prior to my arrival at Salvation Army Southview Heights, I had a complete evaluation. The Salvation Army painstakingly examined every part of my background, hoping to get extensive information about my personal history, as well as all tax and financial information. I moved into the Salvation Army on March 1, 2021. 70% of $1,614.78 is $1,130.35 plus. Cable, $30. Telephone, $26.20. Hydro, $18. The total rent on March 1, 2021, was $1,215.58. The Salvation Army says you must file your income taxes with the CRA every year to be eligible for a publicly subsidized income tested client rate. As a diligent and meticulous individual, I have consistently filed my taxes with utmost accuracy year after year, maintaining an exemplary record of 100% compliance. On October 10, 2023, the Salvation Army said I made $26,290. So, on October 10, 2023, the Salvation Army said my assisted living rate on January 1 would be $1,533.58 plus. Cable, $30. Telephone, $26.20. Hydro, $18. I am told the Salvation Army would not do anything about it. They will not help. So, I phoned the CRA, tax services, and they said. Sorry, we overcharged you. You did not make $26,290. You only collected $1,614.78 per month. 
that does not add up. To $26,290. So, we will fix it. Then on October 14, 2023, the Salvation Army sent me a letter. The Salvation Army said my assisted living rate on January 1st would be $1,143.86 plus. Cable, $30. Telephone, $26.20. Hydro, $18. Then on December 27th. The Salvation Army said my assisted living rate on January 1st would be $1,275.28 plus. Cable, $30. Telephone, $26.20. Hydro, $18. I've been told that the Salvation Army does not care what my bank said, they have their own way to do things. This is their letter. On January 9, 2024. Dear Mr. Peterman. I am writing to let you know that you will be charged a monthly rate for your assisted living unit. $1,275.28 plus $74.20 total $1,348.48. I was told not to trust the Salvation Army. I gave them a money order for $1,218.06 for my January rent. On January 3, 2024 the Salvation Army tried to take $1,607.78 out of my bank, plus $48. Oh oh. There was not enough money in the bank, so that check bounced. The government only pays me $1,614.78 each month. The Salvation Army is demanding everything except $3. There is no money for my health care. The Salvation Army advised me to relocate. If I stay here, I can go to the hospital every day for my medicines. The Salvation Army will phone 911 every day to take me there. I can't afford to call 911 now. What should I do moved, so I can buy my medicine, or go to the hospital every day?